Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to go over Litecoin. If you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. Um, also, please check out my Telegram, Discord, and Twitter, Twitter accounts, which are linked in the description below. So we're basically just going to kind of complete this um, analysis where we look at the, the, um, the time derivative of the 50-week moving average. Um, and I can still do this with some more coins, but I, I definitely wanted to do it with Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Um, and, and this is the, the last in that series of three. So first of all, this is the price of Litecoin, and we're looking at the number of days it's been around on the x-axis. And I'm sure many of you guys recognize this. We're going to go ahead and add in the 50-week moving average. Um, note that this is a logarithmic scale, so 10 to the 0 is 1, 10 to the 1 is 10, 10 to the 2 is 100. So then this would be 200, 300, and then this is around 385, if you remember where the peak was. Um, so what we're going to do is, one of the things we've noted in, in prior videos is how the time derivative of the 50-week moving average um, has been, you know, once it kind of gets above zero for Bitcoin, it more or less stays there for, you know, the entirety of the next market cycle. So for Litecoin, if we show on the, this right axis over here, which corresponds to this red um, uh, figure, this red line over here, you can see we're plotting the time derivative of the 50-week moving average, and we're multiplying it by the inverse of price. Now, we don't have to multiply it by the inverse of price, but the reason I'm doing it is because later I'm going to show Ethereum and Bitcoin on the same chart, and by kind of normalizing it like that, by dividing out by the price, we can put them on the same graph, and it's, it's really simple to compare them. But essentially, when when this dashed line going horizontally here, when we're above it, it means the 50-week moving average is increasing, and when we're below it, it means it's decreasing. So, you know, you can see over here, we're above it, 50-week moving average is going up. Here we drop below it, 50-week moving average is going down. These dashed lines going down vertically down the page are the two Litecoin halvings that have occurred. Now, you can see that in both instances, when we kind of went back above um, to that zero line where the slope is just flat, essentially, um, it, was, it was leading into the halving. So here we were going into the halving, and then over here we were going into the halving. So both times it was the halving, it appears that the halving is what ultimately kind of helped the price, um, uh, you know, go back up, and then ultimately the 50-week moving average um, started to to um, level out. Now you can see that um, in both cases the price spiked a very significant amount, like four to five hundred percent, both times leading into the halving. But that they both corrected, um, you know, by um, maybe like thirty to fifty percent going into the halving. So you know, over here in anticipation of the halving, we see a run up, but then immediately going into it, like as we're crossing it, we're actually decreasing um, both times. And I did cover this um, a while ago as well. So there are there is a key difference. Um, in in 2015, when we came up, we held that 50-week moving average as support, and now we have not held it as support in 2019. Um, but we are going to keep trugging along here. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, uh, so let's just keep checking along and look at uh, how it compares to, to Bitcoin. So here we're looking at days since inception and the time derivative of the 50-week moving average times the inverse of price for Litecoin and Bitcoin. And you can see that with Bitcoin, um, once we really get above that, uh, that zero slope, the 50-week moving average does tend to, you know, tend to increase. And really, it's, it's Bitcoin, is, it's the market mover. You know, it will increase historically, and it'll do its own thing for a while before other coins will follow suit. And in the past, there's been key milestones at which point these other coins will take off. Um, and for Litecoin, it is it, the last market cycle. It did not really take off until Bitcoin reached its previous all-time high, and then again at the end of Bitcoin's bull run. So you can see, you know, once Bitcoin, or sorry, once Litecoin gets back up to this zero slope, it kind of just stays at that zero slope for, for a, an extended period of time. And we're talking one or two years. And you can see back here, if we look at the price, I mean, this is what we were doing for one or two years. We were more or less just staying um, uh, pretty flat until Bitcoin reached its previous all-time high. 
And then that is when Litecoin took off. And then it took off again over here at the end of Bitcoin's bull run. So if we put Ethereum on here too, you know, you can see it, 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 they all seem to be fairly similar. I mean, you know, they all, they all rise together in a sense, they all fall together, um, and then they all eventually cross that zero slope where the, 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 the slope goes from being negative to positive. Now, this is showing days since inception. I think it'd be obviously wise to look at just the general time axis. So here, you can see as each coin gets introduced, we have Bitcoin, has its first bear market, pops back above on this time derivative, and then bull market, bull market, Litecoin is introduced. Um, Litecoin does really well, Bitcoin does really well, bear market. They both go above zero. Bitcoin enters the bull market first where it, it reaches its previous all-time high. Um, then Litecoin enters it and then Ethereum is brought into the party and then they're all doing really well, really well. Bear market again. Now we're all going back up to this zero slope and we're hoping that Bitcoin can maintain um, a healthy distance from this zero slope so that we can try to get back into that bull market, which we're not currently in. Um, for a variety of reasons. So let us, um, you know, I, I, I thought about showing the 100 week moving average, the time derivative of it, but I thought it would be a little bit redundant and I didn't want to just hammer you guys with the same information over and over. So I actually want to pull up one of these charts, which you don't often see me pull up, so you know there's a reason. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we're not really, you know, Litecoin isn't holding the, um, it's not holding that 50 week moving average. Let's go ahead and pull this up on the weekly um, like it did back in, in 2015. Um, so clearly this doesn't have, uh, yeah, so you can see here we held the 50 week moving average and then here we fall in below it. And we're just gonna go ahead and hide the 200 week because we don't really care about it right now. Um, let's just take a, a measured move here. So we're gonna go from the bottom right here before this run all the way up to the top um, and I mean we could all, we could go all the way up to the, the wick of that uh, that candle but let's just go to the body of the candle the top of the body so it's around 280 percent and then we're gonna and it was it occurred over 77 days and then now we're gonna take another measured move to the bottom so it occur, it occurred about over 56 days so it was a 280 percent gain followed by about a 50% loss. And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take a measured move from candle to bottom to candle top, around a 465% gain, so pretty significantly more than this. Um, and then followed by a, so far, around a 70, 68% drop. Um, now, let's, let's, let's note something here, so, Let's note these ratios to see if they're about the same. So 77 and 56. Um, so let's just go to Wolfram Alpha um, and uh, let us just put that in. So we're gonna go um, 77 over 56. We're gonna set that equal to um, 189 over X. So we're just gonna see what this gives us. We're gonna solve for X. Um, and it's going to give us something that we then want to say take the approximate form of. So 137 days. Um, so you can see we are, are past that currently if we were to follow that same uh, ratio. But also I think I, I drew it out a little bit, um, or not entirely accurately, but more or less, uh, you know, I think it's pretty close. Um, but you can imagine that, you know, when we see a, a, a larger gain over, over here, it was also followed by a, a steeper drop, as, or not, maybe not steeper, but just a more extended drop. I mean, you know, this, this run up here was, in a sense, almost dwarfed by this run up here, if you're just looking at the candles. And so this, you know, this correction here was not nearly as bad as this correction over here. Um, now, if we were to repeat the past, then pretty soon um, we would, you know, we would likely see something where um, we start, you know, leveling out. Okay, so I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, this is just if we were to repeat the past, and um, basically, you know, just 
did more or less stay the or if the light the price of Litecoin more or less just stayed the same until Bitcoin reached its previous all time high. You know, plus or minus 10, 20 bucks, I, you know, those things aren't really that relevant. And clearly, the, you know, what Litecoin does is going to be highly dependent on what Bitcoin does. So, I mean, if Bitcoin were to drop a couple thousand dollars tomorrow, then obviously Litecoin is going to drop with it. It's just, it's just how, how it works. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Um, but I, I, I do think it's interesting, you know, just looking at um, these... You know how these are very similar. These these trends, which is why I pulled this pulled this up. I mean, you can see we had um, you know bull market, bear market, run up to the halving, going into the halving we decreased, and then we stayed flat until Bitcoin reached its previous all time high. We've kind of repeated it so far: bull market, bear market, run up to the halving. As we go into the halving, we're going down. The only thing we haven't done yet so far if we were to continue to repeat the last cycle is just find our bottom and then just essentially hover around that. I mean, and it can, it can vary. I mean, you can see here, we, we oscillated between say $3 and, you know, $5.52 5 or so. So, I mean, it's not out of the question that um, we would, you know, oscillate by several tens of dollars um, for an extended period of time if we were to continue emulating what Bitcoin or what Litecoin did in the last market cycle. So um, I hope that guy, I hope that is somewhat informative for you guys. Um, I mean, remember this is, you know, the purpose of this video is to show these time derivatives and show that historically, once we get back to that zero slope, we, we hold that region. Litecoin holds that region, um, at least it has in the past. And so is Bitcoin, and so have a lot of other coins. Um, you know, once they show that healthy growth back up, you know, we'd, we'd like to see a, at least maintain that for a little while, um, get that 50-week moving average slopes to level out, and then ultimately um, have it increase again going into the bull market. Um, so I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will try to, um, you know, post some more videos in the coming days. Again, if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. And be sure to check out um, the Telegram uh, channel and my Twitter account in the description below. Until next time, guys. Until next time, bye.